Are AI micro clouds causing us to rethink public cloud computing? Some people think that's true. Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda are following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek. Let's get started. So if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you may recall that I did cover micro clouds, and I'll go ahead and link that up there. Um, which was an interesting uh, derivative of the market. And so what those are, are particular smaller clouds. It could be just storage clouds. They could be something that just supports compute, something that just supports containers. Uh, and But they exist in the public cloud computing market and they're a viable public cloud option that are out there. However, what we're seeing lately is the growth of the AI micro clouds. Uh, people like CoreWeave, and there's a bunch of other companies out there uh, that specialized that are specialized cloud computing uh, providers that focus on high performance, uh, artificial intelligent machine learning workloads, and they're able to offer more flexible, cost-effective, and specialized alternatives to traditional hyperscale providers, such as AWS, Google, Google Cloud, Azure, things like that. And so it's an interesting market out there that we're seeing emerged, and we're seeing providers that are basically disrupting a space that's been around for about 15 years. As recall, and this is kind of, uh, you know, going back a long period of time, the 2008 through 2000, you know, 11, 2012 timeframe, we had about 30 different cloud providers out there. Everybody was competing in the space. And obviously the big providers, you know, such as Microsoft, Google, and AWS were out there as well. But the smaller providers realized they couldn't compete with a larger public cloud provider. So everybody was trying to become a public cloud provider. You know, however, fast forward 2025, and the market's changed a bit. We have a dominant uh, three that are in the space, AWS, Microsoft, and Google, AMD. Uh, and then some, you know, secondary providers. We have Oracle and IBM and some other providers that are out there as well. But we do have a number of these smaller nano micro providers that are starting to emerge that deal with a specialized area. So in other words, they have, you know, some sort of a solution that they're able to provide, that's all they focus on. And in doing that, they're able to provide this particular solution, such as AI, uh, GPUs as a service, things like that, at a greatly reduced rate and a much more flexible uh, flexible terms that uh, the enterprises are gonna find more attractive in some instances. So that's what we're talking about here. So what do these providers offer? Well, it's specialized infrastructure. They have dense GPU deployments, such as NVIDIA H100s, A100s, et cetera. If you've been following the NVIDIA uh, processors, uh, GPU-based processors out there, everybody knows that those are the hot commodities out there. They're purpose-built for AI ML workloads, artificial intelligent machine learning, optimized networking, and storage configurations. So the key differentiators here would be lower cost. In other words, they're often 50 to 80% less than major cloud providers. In other words, you can build a GPU-based AI system on these specialized cloud providers on these micro clouds uh, at a greatly reduced rate, and they're, they're advertising 50 to 80 percent less. Uh, I'm sure your mileage will vary a bit, but but uh, generally speaking, that's that's uh, that's what that's what's going on. That's the reason you would do it. They provide faster scaling and uh, deployment and scaling. They provide more flexible resource allocations, direct access to specialized hardware, better support for AI specific workloads. In other words, if all they do is AI and they're able to provide specialized chipsets that uh, AI application developers and people who want to operationalize these AI systems, whether it's doing training or inference-based processing, and they just focus on that, they're going to be able to do that extremely well. This is versus the larger public cloud providers like AWS, Microsoft, and Google, which focuses on everything. Uh, they support data warehousing, they support business analytics, they support transaction processing systems, uh, basically everything you could find in a data center, you know, soup to nuts, so to speak, where all these um, micro clouds do, these AI-based micro clouds do, is just focused on the AI space and focused on building and deploying an AI system, and that makes them that makes them unique. So, what are the target use cases? Large language models, training and inference-based processing, AI model development and deployment would be a use case as well. High-performance computing, since they're able to support GPU-based systems. 
if you use GPU based intensive uh, intensive processing, such as training and inference processing for um, generative AI systems, they provide that as well. Uh, again, GPU intensive applications and machine learning operations or ML ops. So now that we know what generally what they do, who are the players out there? Uh, well, some of you probably have already heard of Core Weave uh, infrastructure. They operate, uh, you know, 14 plus data centers across North America. They're the largest private development uh, uh, development uh, system of NVIDIA GPUs, and the first to receive uh, Dell PowerEdge XC9712 with NVIDIA's GB200 and NVL72. Of course, you guys who follow chips know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. And the key offerings would be specialized. They provide specialized AL ML workloads. Uh, in other words, they support these workloads with a, an environment and infrastructure that's built specifically uh, to deploy uh, generative AI systems. Uh, Kubernetes native platforms, for example, are able to support those and the NVIDIA H100, A100, and the latest GPU offerings. So in other words, Instead of you having to buy the GPUs, and they're very expensive, by the way, and get them in your data center and get them in a server and get them in the rack getting off and running, have to maintain those things, including powering them, uh, dealing with the operations of them, things like that. They do that for you. Uh, so the idea, if there's the GPUs start to get better and better and other uh, competitors into the marketplace, they'll be able to provide those offerings for you on demand. So this is something you're able to outsource. So you're going to make the GPU... Uh, obsolescence uh, game that people are playing out there, their problem, not your problem. So uh, that's a key uh, value of leveraging this technology. Recent developments, uh, as far as Core Weave goes, uh, $1.2 billion in Series C funding. That's a huge. Uh, then uh, $642 million secondary investment in December of 2023. Uh, the C funding just came in May 2024. Strategic partnership with Dell, Pure Storage, uh, and the valuations right now, I guess, based on their less funding round, was at about $23 billion. So these guys are knocking it out of the park, at least from an influential uh, position. In other words, they're really kind of setting the standard as they're the AI micro cloud that people are looking to leverage. And CoreWeave, if you don't know them, take a look at them. If you're moving into generative AI systems and you're looking to build those things on AWS, Microsoft, or Google, this should be considered as an option. Doesn't mean you go there, but this means this is an, a viable option as well as some of the on-prem solutions that may provide you with better value. Another player would be Lambda Labs. Uh, their infrastructure, they use multiple data centers with NVIDIA GPU clusters and expandable expanding GPU infrastructure is what they offer. Key offerings, on-demand GPU access, just like CoreWeave, H100, A100, A6000 instances cloud workstations, recent developments, they did a $120 million round in 2024, uh, raising funding and seeking an additional $8 million for expansion. And the market position, they're a direct competitor with CoreWeave. So they're proving kind of CoreWeave's market. CoreWeave got into the space. Uh, definitely, it was a space that was always there as an option, the ability to build micro clouds. And people are following CoreWeave's uh, their lead, so to speak, and backing their own solutions in the market. So Core Weave uh, probably is happy with the fact that there is competitors out there in this space. People are going to competing with them because it validates the market. And next would be Modal, M-O-D-A-L. I apologize if I uh, uh, pronounce that incorrectly. Infrastructure, they use serverless platform architecture, GPU and CPU offerings. In other words, they're mixing both. Key offerings would be a serverless GPU compute platform, automated scaling capability, Python-first deployment, and they focus on developer-friendly interfaces, machine learning deployment opt optimization, and like all clouds, they support a pay-per-use model. So they're going to be an option out there as well. Uh, didn't get into the funding rounds there, but that's somebody else who's just out there as a micro cloud you should, you should consider. Next would be Cerebras, uh, S, sorry, C E R. E-B-R-A-S, infrastructure. They provide custo uh, custom uh, waffle scale engine, WSE, uh, CS-2, AI supercomputer system. So obviously they have a specialized place and they're, they're providing the supercomputer infrastructure. Key offering specialized AI hardware. So they provide high performance computing, large language module training. Differentiator would be a custom, you know, custom silicon approach, unique hardware architecture. So this looks like they're 
the micro cloud that's providing the AI space with supercomputing computing infrastructure. And some people are going to need that instead of buying it yourselves, you just use this technology. And finally, it would be etched, E-T-C-H-E-D. Infrastructure would be custom uh, ASIC development, uh, transformer-specific hardware. Key offerings would be uh, uh, so SOHA ch chips for LLM interface, SOHA's S-O-H-U. Apologize if I birded the pronunciation of that. Uh, high throughput AI services, part of their key offerings as well, and their focus is on interface optimization, transformer architecture, and providing things that are energy efficient. Not quite sure how they're doing that, but they're promoting that as a key differentiator for themselves. So what's the difference? Um, there's a key few things you can consider as differentiators out there, ways to look at the market, the growing AI micro cloud space. CoreWeave would be the largest scale, fastest growing, most diverse GPU offerings. They're obviously the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, they're the AWS, so to speak, of this particular market share. Uh, Lambda, focus on accessibility and developer experience. Modal, uh, serverless first approach. And uh, Cerebras, uh, again, S-E-R-E-B-R-A-S, custom hardware architecture. And then Etched would be a specialized inference optimization system they're able to provide. And again, these things are very different, if you notice, that uh, probably Lambda and CoreWeave are the most that are alike. The other ones are really kind of focused on a different area of the market, different specialization, different use cases that they're going after, which is interesting. So what's my take on the AI micro cloud movement? I think it's a solid fallback position for the larger cloud providers such as AWS, Microsoft, and Google. So in other words, uh, we're finding that deploying on a generative AI system on these larger public cloud platforms is going to be uh, cost prohibitive in many instances, just because of the amount that they charge for the GPU use space, things like that. But obviously the reason people do that is they're kind of the easy button for generative AI. They provide a complete set of tool sets, deployment, operation systems, things like that, but you're going to pay for it. And so companies that may see that as not providing the best value, they may look for on-prem solutions, those alternatives, or they may find that these micro clouds may be kind of a, a in-between solution, a, a, you know, splitting the difference between what on-prem is, where we're operating everything, and have and make and everything is, is in essence our problem with the cloud providers where we're outsourcing and using things through a, a public consumption model. However, it's going to be very expensive. These could be a good fallback position uh, for where those two extremes aren't necessarily going to bring the most value back to the business. So the on-prem stuff is usually cheaper, but it's a DIY solution. Public cloud providers are, you know, path of least resistance, as I mentioned. And the use of a cloud consumption model provides much better value, but it's doing so at a much more reduced cost. Now, there is limitations, the fact that if you're trying to do something beyond uh, a, the particular narrow set of capabilities that these micro clouds provide, you're going to have to either use a cloud provider or an on-prem system to do that. Uh, and that could be uh, a deal breaker for some companies out there. But again, if you're saving a million dollars a month, uh, that may be a... a that may be a chore you're willing to take on. So, however, these are still early days for AI micro clouds with large market. The not the market is not yet proven. We're likely going to see some quick consolidation uh, when the investors, you know, are going to get lucrative exits. I'm sure that, you know, something like CoreWeave and and Lambda and, and the other uh, in the marketplace are going to get some offers uh, in early start. They may not have made a lot of money yet, um, but they're hugely uh, valuable based on where the market's going. And certainly the generative AI investments are everywhere. So this is much like going to be much like the cloud normalization we saw between 2010 and 2013, where lots of clouds were in the market. We had like 30 of them I was tracking, and suddenly they all got bought up, or they exited the market, or they uh, became managed service providers, or co-location providers, something like that. We may see the same sort of normalization that occurs in the micro, uh, micro cloud space, the AI micro cloud space. So... Likely we'll have one or two left in the market by the end of 2027. I probably see three viable options in the market. So, and I think those are going to be good. Those are going to keep the public cloud providers honest because they're going to have to keep their prices at a reasonable level or else the micro clouds are going to become a, be a better uh, opportunity for them. So some of the risks here are that GPUs are less critical, you know, than we think. I think people overestimate the value of GPUs in terms of building, deploying, uh, AI systems. If you look at large language models and training these things, I don't think a lot of businesses are going to get in the business of building and deploying large language models. They're going to do it with agentic-based deployment, small language models, 
tactical use of, gen of generative AI and traditional AI and machine learning based systems. And I think that is this is going to normalize the importance that GPUs have. Uh, and so if we're not building a lot of systems that need access to GPUs or need GPUs, uh, which I think the, the market may be going, then there's less interest in uh, providers out there, including public cloud providers that provide GPU-based systems. So conclusion, is it worth considering? Well, it's going to be a viable option. I think it's an, an exciting thing that we're seeing this, uh, this movement out there where we're building kind of a new technological space which are smaller versions of public cloud providers that, again, focus on a specific narrow set of technology. In this case, AI needs GPUs, you know, things like that. And I think there's going to be an area of the market where that's going to make them thrive. And certainly the pent-up demand for enterprises that are moving to generative AI systems and their need to be able to leverage environments as a consumption model, they're going to provide them with the cheapest, most viable um, alternatives. And right now, the sticker shock is out there very much in generative AI systems. They're seeing you know, millions and millions of dollars having to go into the infrastructure to build this technology. And so if they're able to get that infrastructure again on demand uh, through a, a public consumption model, uh, then they're gonna do that. And I think these micro clouds are gonna be able to provide that capability. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Also, don't forget to check out my InfoWorld blog on uh, cloud computing. Also, don't forget to check out my 128 uh, LinkedIn learning courses out there. Also, my uh, fully mentored generative AI architecture course, I Don't Go Cloud Careers, and my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. Cheers.